Do you know how much danger this puts our family in? You hacked into a bank? She's not just a pretty face. Thanks for the assist. So the journey from Crazy Rich Asians to now? Gosh. The journey has been a phase of my life that I completely did not expect. I think for a woman uh, who is in my late 50s, it is exactly what I needed to feel alive and beautiful and relevant because the world suddenly opened up for me in so many ways that I had not experienced. And so the newness of it all, especially for a person of my age, is so enlivening, is so enlightening and inspiring because with newness comes newness in yourself. And so the last three years, all the way up to now, in my last week of Kung Fu, it's just been one new thing after another and um, I do not at all feel daunted, I do not at all feel tired, I just feel so alive and so energized and ready to do more. <laughs> That's Mama, she loves surprises. Surprises? Surprises are for people who don't have jobs. Hey, you call this progress? What's wrong with your hands? Nothing. See, I'm fine. I'm just out of practice. The Soongs are going to come in six hours. And everything about this dinner has got to be perfect. Or else, Mrs. Soong is going to make that face. What face? This face. <laughs> oh, ha ha ha. Very funny. Jin, there's oh. more in the car? In the car. <laughs> <laughs> Very the same in terms of family. And I think um, being the mum in Kung Fu, which is a brand new series, it's got 13 one hour episodes, and playing a character that has so much to do in this entire season, I feel that I am able to deepen the ideas and the concepts of this Asian family with so much detail and nuance. And this I am so thankful for the creators of this reimagining of Kung Fu um, to provide me that platform to do that. They really, really give my character Meili so much to do. And they really allow me to explore so many different ups and downs of all sorts of family relationships. Not just the one that I have with the lead, Nikki, but with my husband, played by the wonderful Tai Ma. With my son, played by John Presida, who plays a gay character. My eldest daughter, played by Shannon Dang, who is getting married. Already, just within the family, you can see all the different layers in which I get to explore as the mom. And then to see how this family works together as a family to face bigger challenges within Kung Fu. I think that's like wonderful. And just like in Crazy Rich Asians, it is the strong, you know, love you unconditionally no matter what. That fierce family love that ultimately um, you know, seizes the day. It's a big theme in both of these projects and it is a big theme in my real life. And so I get to really enjoy it on all those levels. When it comes to food, um, I am the owner of a dumpling store in Kung Fu, right? So we get, you know, we get so many opportunities to play with food, but this time in a restaurant setting. And Taima, I call Taima the restaurant police because yes. family actually had uh, a Chinese restaurant. I've never had that experience 
in real life. And so he knows all the ins and outs. He knows, you know, the sort of feng shui that the kitchen requires in a commercial restaurant, which doors to go in, which doors to come out just so that you don't hit into each other. You should, you know, how do you carry plates, you know, how he knows all that feng shui. So I call him Lao Gong. Um, and, you know, I, 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 I've learned so much from him. I just leave him and listen to him as the restaurant police. Um, I would like to see more uh, family meals. We do have some here, but as you know, food as an element in any Asian family is, it's like, you know, there's no end to it. really hope to see more and more and more and more of how food plays into family togetherness, you know, how we love each other through food. A really, really unusual thing, which is why I really feel that in the last three years, there is a feng shui happening in my, in my life that is very positive and keeps opening up these new opportunities for me. So, Thai Mask Manager, he is somebody who comes from my part of the world you know, Malaysian and Singaporean, sort of his parents and all that sort of stuff. And I've known him for many, many years. But when he was in LA, he got in touch with me and he said, okay, come on, you know, are you free? Let's meet for breakfast. And I said, I would love to see you. Okay, I'll come to your hotel. So there we were sitting in the dining room. And then he said, just to let you know, uh, another one of my clients, Thai Ma, is going to uh, join us at the end of our at meeting because then he and Taima were going off somewhere. And so that was the first time I got to meet Taima. And then, um, and again, this was before Kung Fu. I didn't know anything was going to bring us to work together. And then the other weird coincidence is we have a mutual friend, uh, you know, the casting director, Po Ping. When I went to LA, Ho Ping asked me to buy those little prawn, I don't know if you have it here, it's like these little crispy prawn um, snacks. And so I brought a lot of them. And then she said, okay, I'm going to get my friend, Tai Ma, to come and collect those prawn fritters from you because he was going to fly to Canada where she was and then he was going to bring them, you know, to her. And so again, not knowing Taima, this car comes and then Taima is like with these sunglasses and he says, oh, hi, I'm Taima. I'm the person that's going to be bringing the prawn fritters to Pope. And I said, oh, very nice to meet you. And he was like parked illegally. So I had to very quickly give him the prawn fritters and then he just drove off. And then what, you know, what is the world telling us? Just, I think a year and a year and a half or a year and a half later, here we are playing husband and wife, seeing each other practically almost every day. He, he and I both live here. We pass each other food all the time, you know, so <laughs> life is so funny, right? He is the most generous scene partner. He is, he is ready to give you everything that he has anytime. Whether or not it is a funny scene, whether or not it is a, a, you know, a, a scene that it does not require very much, or whether or not it is a scene that is so emotionally intense, he is there. He's there right through whether or not the camera is on him or not on him. He is that sort of a scene partner. And so I walk onto set no matter what scene I'm doing with him, knowing full well that I will be 100% supported and I trust him completely. Meaning we don't even discuss how we're going to do the scene. We just do and I know he will catch me. And I, I would like to think that he trusts me too to know that, you know, I will catch him. So we just play. It's in the office! Next time, check your pockets before you leave the house. Yeah, yeah, thanks for grabbing them. Oh, hey, uh, catering event, Friday, 5 p.m. Gonna need you to at 4. Seriously, Mama, I just said I could do it. Don't worry, after three years, I'm used to it. They'll never let me off the hook. Good. End of discussion. Jin, there's more in the van. I'm not going to give out any spoilers, but I can tell you this. You can expect the relationship between Meili and Nikki to start from the earth 
to go up into the moon, circle around the moon, fly back onto earth and go down underground and then to come up again. We really, really go through so much throughout the entire season. And it's almost as if we grow together, you know. We are one way at the beginning and by the end of the season, we are a completely different way, but we discover that we are more similar than we think we are. I think, I'm, I'm hoping that people will follow our relationships. Yeah. Because I'm also in the cast for the Paramount full-length animation Tiger's Apprentice. Right, together with Henry Golding and Brendan Suhu and Michelle Yeoh and Sandra Oh and Sherry Kohler. So I've been doing a lot of that. And then I did this Alexander app, this voicing. First of all, I love voice work. So I do a lot. I've done a lot of it, you know, and I love it. I think it's my introvert but creative nature. I love sort of being by myself in a booth and just allowing my imagination to run free. And I think that voice work really gives me that satisfaction. And yet it also is such, to me, a beautiful way of acting in a completely different way. You don't have to worry too much about how you look or anything like that. You know, you, you are just using your voice to present nuance and subtleties and character and humor and love and anger and fear and I love all of that you know I hope to do more and more of it with Alexander it was so close to my heart because the story is a Singaporean story and I've been away from Singapore for such a long time and I miss my home so much and it talked with the type of detail about Singapore home-cooked food that I, I dare say only another Singaporean really understand the emotion of that dish, you know. And, and so when I read the story, when it was sent to me, I cried when I read it because it was written so beautifully by Cheryl Tan. And I just really connected with the words and the story and the subject matter and what it was like to be in this COVID world and to be away from your family and to have all these fears and how food just basically is our language of love. <laughs> So that was so gorgeous and when I was actually recording it, the words, you know, flew out of me without very much thinking and I say that with all joy because it was so freeing because I think the connection just found its way, you know. I hope everybody will listen to this um, story. It's called Recipes from Disaster and it's on the Alexander app. The app is beautiful, you know why? Not only do you get to listen to it, but you get to see a little film, you know? So it's very cool and cute and hip. And it's like when you go walking, you just put on your earphones and you can just listen to it, you know? And you can listen to all the other people who are on that app as well, reading other short stories. And I was in such amazing voice company, Emma Corrin and Helena Bonham Carter and David Tennant and, oh, and I was like, what? And then to see my name there and I felt so proud, so proud. You can watch Kung Fu at 8 p.m. Uh, Pacific time on The CW. Yay, so that's tonight. <laughs> That's tonight. Hey, thank you.